Hello everyone. This video is a follow-up to a recent video of mine about a dreadful transphobic article published by the BBC on their website. If you haven't seen that video, I'd encourage you to watch that one first to get caught up. It isn't very long, and I'll include a link to it below in the video description. Right, so, welcome to round two. Following on directly from that last video, the BBC have been sending out responses to the various complaints people made about the article. I posted on Twitter asking people to share with me the text of their complaints and also the BBC response, which a very large number of people did, and I'd like to say thank you very much to everyone who took the time to share that with me, it was very useful. So, the BBC have so far been sending out two responses, both of which are predictably utterly rubbish. The first response is a general defence of the article, its aims, and in particular its inclusion of the Get the L Out survey, and this appears to have been sent en masse in response to a variety of different complaints, but in particular ones that focus on the survey. The second response, which I and many others received, is a defence of the author of the article choosing not to include Chelsea Poe. Now this is inadequate, because my complaint was not that the article did not include Chelsea Poe, it was that the author of the article interviewed Chelsea Poe, and then lied that she did not. So we're going to read these two responses, identify the places where the BBC is deliberately missing the point, and then discuss how we're going to escalate this. The first response opens by saying that they've received feedback from people who have found the article challenging, as if it's some work of genius we just haven't comprehended yet, instead of vile, discriminatory hate speech. It then says that the article was carefully considered before publication and went through an internal editorial review process. Now, this is not a defence of the article, it is a condemnation of their editorial review process. Do the BBC expect us to believe that this article was carefully reviewed before publication, but that nobody noticed the multiple quotes from and enormous photograph of the rapist in the middle of the article, who they later had to cut from the article? Either the review process didn't catch Lily Cade's inclusion, or they didn't care, either one of which means their review process is not fit for purpose. The response then moves on to defend the inclusion of the Get the L Out survey, saying, It's been argued by some people that the article is flawed because it's based on a survey of 80 people. However, the article itself states there is little research in this area, that the survey featured was conducted on social media and is therefore self-selecting, and that even the author of the survey admits it may not be a representative sample. Now, the issue with this is twofold. Firstly, although it begins with the word however, the second sentence here does not contradict the first. The charge is that the survey is biased and flawed, and the BBC responses to say we know, but we admitted that. Now, that's not an answer. The fact that there is quote little research in this area doesn't give you a green light to base your arguments on bad research, even if you admit it's bad. There could be little research in this area, because the area in question is a foundationless moral panic invented by hate groups. The other issue here is that the BBC is not mentioning the transphobia, the bigotry, the discrimination in the survey. It is pretending that all complaints about the survey have been because it is of strictly poor academic quality, which it is, but that isn't the main problem with it. The survey deliberately and repeatedly refuses to gender trans people correctly. It approvingly includes the quote, all transsexuals rape women's bodies, and states in reference to this quote that this analysis remains as relevant as ever. So when the response goes on to say that furthermore there is a link to the details of the findings of the survey in the article, that's worse than not linking to it, I hope you understand. This open hate speech is linked in the article, it's just a click away from the BBC website. The rest of the response deals with impartiality, saying, We have a strong commitment to impartiality, which means we constantly consider and evaluate which stories to cover and how. Impartiality is fundamental, and includes covering stories on any point of the spectrum of debate. Now, this impartiality talk is quite revealing. First off here, if we look at the BBC's editorial guidelines, in the section Impartiality and Racism, the first heading in that section reads, in big bold letters, The BBC is not impartial on racism, and it calls opposition to racism a fundamental democratic principle. So, let's say a racist group in the UK 
patriotic alternative, we'll imagine, puts out a self-selecting survey of its social media followers and asks them their thoughts about immigrants. And then let's say they pepper their findings with quotes referring to immigrants as rapists. Would the BBC approvingly share and link to that survey? No, it wouldn't. Hopefully not, anyway. The BBC would say, This is obvious racist hate speech put out by a clearly biased group, clumsily dressed up as an academic study, and we will not share it because the BBC is not impartial on racism. Racism is not to be debated. When it comes to trans issues, however, the BBC has done the exact equivalent of the scenario I just described. They treat trans rights as a debate. They are giving a platform to groups who want to take away rights that trans people already have. In casting this as a debate with legitimate opposing sides, in declaring that trans rights are something one can be impartial about, The BBC are making a political statement here, regardless of any pretense of journalistic neutrality. They're saying trans rights are up for debate, and groups that want to discriminate against trans people, that want to take rights away from trans people, they deserve access to our platform. But let's put a pin in that for now and move on to talk about the second response, the one that deals with the author's lie about no high-profile trans women wanting to talk to her. And this starts out... In preparing the article, the BBC conducted a number of interviews with a number of people over a number of months. However, it is commonplace for some interviewees who may have been spoken to during the research stage not to feature in the final version of the article due to a number of factors. Now, we know all this, this doesn't matter at all, it is irrelevant to the actual complaint, which was about the lie in the article, which, amazingly, the BBC response goes on to repeat. As the article states, a number of high-profile commentators on this issue were contacted, but declined to contribute. Now, this is what the complaint was actually about, this particular lie. The original article states, I contacted several other high-profile trans women who have either written or spoken about sex and relationships. None of them wanted to speak to me. So, high-profile trans women who have either written or spoken about sex and relationships is the definition we're concerned with here. Now, Chelsea Poe is a trans woman. She was interviewed by the author of the article. This is beyond dispute. The BBC have admitted to that. Chelsea Poe has spoken about sex and relationships in various interviews in a range of different media outlets. This is also beyond dispute. The BBC's argument, therefore, hinges solely on the term high profile. They say the definition of high profile is clearly open to debate. Now, no, it is not. In a vacuum, okay, high profile is open to debate, but within the context of the article, it is absolutely not. Firstly, Chelsea Poe was high profile enough to be contacted and actually interviewed for the article in the first place. Why would they bother doing that if she then wasn't high profile enough to include in the piece? That doesn't make sense. Secondly, the article includes examples of trans women who the author of the article does feel are high profile. It says, none of them wanted to speak to me, but my editors and I felt it was important to reflect some of their views in this piece, and then it goes on to name exactly who she's talking about. Now, one of the people quoted here is a YouTuber with less than 10,000 subscribers, speaking in a video posted seven years ago that's had about 10,000 views. Now, I'm not sub-count shaming here or anything, but if this source counts as high profile, then Chelsea Poe must count as high profile, mathematically, because she has more than double the amount of social media followers as the high-profile source in the article. It isn't numerically possible for this person to be high-profile and Chelsea Poe not to be high-profile. This argument is just pathetic from the BBC. I can't physically put enough emphasis on the word pathetic here. For them to be reduced to this childish, petulant shite to cover up a blatant, bigoted lie... How ridiculous that they would even attempt this, and how shameful that they think it would work. The last line of the response basically says, we can include whoever we want, screw you. Which is the same irrelevant point as earlier, that's not what the complaint was about. Now then, we've looked at two responses there, and I don't know about you, but I'm not completely satisfied here. I don't know if you can tell. And before I talk about what I'm going to do in response here, I'd like to note a few things. 
Firstly, some of the BBC responses were slow going out because, to quote an email they sent about the delay, we're currently dealing with a higher than normal volume of cases. So they were snowed under, basically. They got too many complaints to deal with in the normal way. Next, having read a lot of these complaints, I know that the BBC have thus far sent these two responses out to basically every complaint they received, even in cases where they're entirely inadequate. I mean, they're always inadequate, but there are a lot of people out there who complained, for instance, about the inclusion of Lily Cade, then the Get the L Out survey, and then the lie about Chelsea Poe, but who got a response which only addressed the lie about Chelsea Poe and ignored the rest. Every complaint I read had something or other that went deliberately unanswered by the BBC. And most common of these was, as I mentioned earlier, complaints about transphobia. It's very clear that the BBC absolutely does not want to engage on any level with talk about transphobia here. If, for instance, you complain about the survey misgendering trans people, the BBC will respond by talking about sample sizes and lack of other research and so on, as if you merely made a dry academic complaint about survey quality. They are deliberately missing the point because they don't want to make a statement about transphobia. They don't want to say, yes, we think it's okay for us to platform groups that misgender trans people, that call trans people rapists, that want to take away trans rights. So, with all that in mind, here's what I'm going to do. Firstly, I'm going to escalate my initial complaint about the lie about Chelsea Poe. I'm going to do that in the same way as the last complaint, by going to the BBC Complaints page link below, selecting BBC Website or Apps, BBC News Website, I'm going to paste the link to the article, but then when it says, are you contacting us about a previous complaint, I'm going to say, yes. On the next page, I'm going to paste the reference code for the complaint I made and explain as precisely as I can how their response was inadequate and failed to answer what I was complaining about, as if they don't already know that. Next, I'm going to submit a new complaint about this article. But before I get into what I'm going to say, a few points about the process here. Firstly, we're going to be in this for the long haul, it looks like. How this works is that you complain once, then once the BBC respond, you can escalate, which is where we are now. Then when they respond to that, you can escalate again. And after their next response, if you're still not satisfied that they answered your complaint, you can contact Ofcom, the UK's communications regulator. Now, there's obviously a delay between each of their responses, especially since they're dealing with a higher volume of cases at the moment for some reason. So this is going to take a while, I'm afraid. Next up, the BBC only accepts initial complaints for 30 working days after material is published, and 30 working days after the article in question was published is Monday. So if you haven't submitted an initial complaint by Monday, you usually will not be able to start the complaints process. So if you have not complained thus far but would like to, or if you have already complained but suddenly get the urge in the next five minutes to submit a new complaint as well, I'd advise that you do that as soon as possible. Also, after the first complaint, you usually can't add any new information during the process. They will only respond, or not respond as it is, to points made in the initial complaint. So be aware of that. Whatever you ultimately want answered here has to be in the initial message. With that in mind, my new complaint is going to be specifically about the transphobia in the Get the L Out survey. I don't like the BBC refusing to address the transphobia. I don't like them deliberately dodging questions about it by pretending to hear something else. I want them to answer for this, for the bigotry, for the transphobia, specifically and directly. So I'm going to complain about the article linking to a survey which refuses to gender trans people correctly, likens trans people to rapists, and so on. But I'm also going to say that I have absolutely no issues whatsoever with the survey's sample size, distribution method, or findings. For the purposes of this complaint, I have zero issues with either this survey or the article it's featured in, with the singular exception of the transphobic language in the survey. That is the sole issue I am concerned with and require a response for, the BBC, if you would be so kind. Now my aim here, of course, is to force them to make a statement specifically regarding the transphobia and their promotion of it, and I'm starting out with a message that gives them as few ways as possible to weasel out of answering me so that when this complaint is escalated, hopefully they will have nowhere to hide. I'm going to keep escalating my complaints, and I would encourage very strongly 
anyone who already feels like doing so, of course, to escalate their initial complaint or submit one for the first time. There is a link below. And again, I'm not telling you what to do here, of course, but I did release this video after work hours on a Friday, coincidentally, and I think it would be swell if the BBC turn up for work on Monday with some things to consider in their inbox. Now, I do realise I'm getting a little Captain Ahab about all of this, and I apologise, I will continue to make videos about other things. We are not in for six months of me ranting at the BBC here. Well, we are in for that, actually, it looks like, but I will try and do other stuff too, I promise.